Hi, Jerry Jenkins here talking about all things writing. Today about how to write a complex villain. Too many novelists create a one-dimensional villain who does bad things simply because he's the bad guy. He might as well be an actor in a melodrama wearing a black hat and cape while twirling his handlebar mustache. Note that I use the male pronoun inclusively here to refer to both genders. A melodramatic villain is a cliché by definition, predictable, unrealistic, and there just for fun. Hissing and booing the bad guy when he comes on stage may be worth a laugh, but in serious fiction such characters don't work. They're not realistic. Creating a believable villain requires subtlety, and he must bear realistic, genuine motivation. Your goal should be to write a character whose actions are so shrewd readers may not even know he's the villain until he reveals his true colors. You want to create a worthy foe for your protagonist. First, an important distinction and explanation of some terms you may find confusing. Villain versus anti-villain. In real life, villains don't consider themselves villainous. They believe their actions are justified. Villains have reasons for what they do, and sometimes those reasons are even good. That doesn't mean they're right, but they believe they are. Many writing experts refer to such fictitious characters as anti-villains. I don't. The term anti-villain refers to a complex character with noble goals but nefarious ways of achieving them. To me, that's not an anti-villain. That's a well-crafted villain. And the more complex you can render him, the better. I believe there are anti-heroes, a character type worth studying sometime, but I contend that simply villain is the right term for your bad guy. So forget anti-villains. Make your villain complicated, even likable. Readers should be able to relate to your villain. He should be believable. That means his actions, though bad, are at least understandable, and some of his motivations may even be good. The best, most credible villain can be a mostly virtuous, likable antagonist with sometimes even heroic goals, but whose actions are ultimately evil. His actions sometimes fall into the morally gray category, making the reader wonder whether he is truly well-intentioned or just a downright monster. So let's discuss how you can create a worthy adversary for your protagonist. I'll introduce four types of complex villains and then offer five tips for writing a strong one. Avoid caricatures and straw men by resisting the temptation to paint your villain as all bad. Often we see villains who hold the opposite view of, say, a social issue than that of the author or the main character. Fine. That's a recipe for conflict and tension. The mistake is to then make the villain a disgusting human being. Try making him a great spouse, or parent, or both, or a helpful giving person instead. Write him as someone you'd enjoy being friends with. Because he's on the other side of the hero's issue, he is indeed the villain. But the reader likes him in spite of all that. Don't we often see this in real life? Someone who is diametrically opposed to our worldview fights against our worthy cause. We want to despise him or see him in an evil light, yet when we meet him, he's charming. That's complicated. That's real life. And that makes for a great story. The villain must still be defeated and right must win out, not because the bad guy in the story is repulsive, but rather despite the fact that he's not. That makes your villain complex and frankly more interesting. It also challenges you to write with more finesse. The villain's motivations are justifiable, at least in his own mind, but in the end, he must be defeated by your hero. If your reader feels even somewhat conflicted about the outcome, you've done your job. So let's look at four types of complex villains you might choose from for your own story. First is the noble villain. He believes duty calls, and he feels compelled to do whatever needs to be done, maybe because of his own misguided conscience or some other outside force. He's still wrong, of course, but he doesn't see it that way. Some examples are Draco Malfoy and Regulus Black from the Harry Potter series, also Jesse Pinkman and Mike Ehrmantraut from Breaking Bad. A second type of complex villain is one who is pitiable. Readers feel sorry for this character because he may not have started out as a bad guy, but he believes desperate times call for desperate measures, so he's all in. His character arc can be dramatic because often he's so psychologically damaged that there's no turning back. Popular examples include Carrie in Stephen King's novel of the same name, Frankenstein's Monster, Anakin Skywalker, who becomes Darth Vader in Star Wars, Loki from Thor, the Master from Doctor Who. All right, a third complex villain type is well-meaning. 
Ever know someone whose intentions are good, but everything they do seems to make things worse? He may sometimes become aware of how wrong he is, and his character arc becomes redemptive, or he might redouble his efforts and become even more evil. Examples include Javert in Les Miserables, Lady Melisandre in A Song of Ice and Fire, Thanos from the Marvel Universe, Raymond Reddington in The Blacklist. All right, one more villain type, the villain in name only. This character actually mirrors the hero in many ways. In fact, they may both pursue the same goal, but with opposite motives. At his core, the villain in name only doesn't really seem like a bad guy. His intentions may be mostly good, and he's smart, but dangerous, mainly because he's likable and no one suspects him of being villainous. Some examples, many of the villains from Arthur Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes novels, Dr. Connors in The Amazing Spider-Man, Sergeant Schultz and Colonel Clink from Hogan's Heroes. So you can see from these four types that your villain need not be one-dimensional. All right, I promised five tips to help you create an effective villain. Uh, a good bad guy is foundational to powerful fiction. He can make or break your story. The more formidable your antagonist, the more compelling your hero. Your villain must, this is tip number one, have a realistic and sympathetic backstory. A backstory is anything that happens before chapter one. You may never reveal any character's entire backstory, but you should know it because it's going to inform your writing. Give your villain reasons for being who he is and doing what he does. You and your readers may be repulsed by his actions, but you should both understand them. That requires a credible backstory that makes your villain realistic and believable. Okay, the second tip. Because he has a realistic backstory, your villain will and must have strong motivations. As readers get to know him, they will deduce what drives him, the why behind his deeds. Some examples of what might motivate him, fear, curiosity, greed, hunger for power, revenge, honor, love, ethics, pride, justice. And notice that some of these are motives that an honorable character might exhibit. Also, your villain might be attempting to thwart potential threats like violence, abuse, injury, illness, natural disaster, loss, grief, combat. Just be sure to give him strong motivations. All right, the third tip, a worthy villain exhibits power. Your villain is committed. He'll stop at nothing to get what he wants. If he doesn't care about the outcome or if he gives up at the first sign of resistance, he won't be worth his salt or your protagonist's time and effort. Avoid making him a fool or a bumbler. That doesn't make for a worthy opponent for your hero. He must be smart and accomplished enough that your readers must grant him at least begrudging respect. Okay, my fourth tip is that your villain should force your protagonist into making difficult decisions. Because it can and should sometimes be hard to tell if your villain is good or bad, which poses a problem for your hero. Remember, your main character becomes more heroic the more worthy his opponent. As I have said, a truly authentic villain often competes with your hero for the same goal, but obviously for different reasons. Writer and writing coach Joanna Penn says it's important you make the conflict specific and the hero's adversary appear nearly unbeatable. This forces your main character to make difficult decisions and ultimately become heroic. Which brings up my fifth and final tip. Your villain should cause your protagonist to grow. Facing increasingly difficult obstacles builds muscles in your protagonist, the ones he needs to become truly heroic in the end, which makes for the most satisfying conclusion. With a few notable exceptions, readers love happy endings where the hero wins the day. So allow your villain to throw everything he's got at your hero. How he responds will speak volumes about how he's changed or hasn't. The bottom line don't shortchange your villain. Invest as much time in crafting him as you do your main character. One-dimensional villains make stories fall flat. So conjure a villain who surprises both your hero and your readers. Make him real, familiar, believable, credible, maybe even attractive. If you're an outliner, my character arc video and worksheet can help you get to know your villain. If you're a pantser, one like me who writes from the seat of your pants, you may not have the patience for that and prefer to dive right into the writing. Do what works best for you. I can't wait to see what you come up with. Now, if you found this video helpful, like it, leave a comment, share it, and subscribe to my page. 
All the best with your writing, and I'll see you next time.